If I had to tell someone the most important thing about a Medicare supplement, it's to think about what's important to you and what are you looking for in your coverage. Whether that's having a plan that covers absolutely everything or something less expensive with more out-of-pocket expenses. Know what's important to you so you can tell your agent and they can find the plan that's best for you. I can mend these socks anymore. Why don't I throw them away? Absolutely not. Those are my favorite socks. Well, they've got a little hole in them. A little hole? Your toes deserve more privacy than this. No, I throw them away. They're only my lucky socks. I wore them the day I was promoted a plain clothes detail. Oh, I didn't realize it meant so much to you. I want to have them bronzed and put on the mantle. Very funny. If I want to hear jokes, I can turn on Milton Berle. I think I'll go out and take a walk. Uh, not to the garage. Why not to the garage? It's my garage, isn't it? Oh, now, Joe, don't be such a busybody. Michael's asked us to stay out of the garage for a few days until he and Freddie finish what they're building in there. Well, just what are they building? That's what I'd like to know. Well, I don't know what it is. It's a secret project, and I'm willing to obey security regulations. Well, why can't they take their secret project over to Freddie's garage? I'd like to put my car away tonight. That's what a garage is for. My car's been standing out in the street all week. Would you mind not standing in front of me? That shirt makes my head swim. Just because I picked this shirt out all by myself, without any help from you, you don't like it. No, I think it's very nice. It's just that uh, when I look at it, the checks jump around, make me dizzy. Now, don't exaggerate. I think this is a very smart shirt. Uh, you were saying? I'm going to put my car away. Joe. Well, it's going to rain tonight. The paper said clear and warmer. That proves it. Rain for sure. Well, Pop, we're we're all through for tonight. I was wondering... Ooh, that shirt sure jumps out at you. Now, don't you start that. Oh, that accounts for it. It's a, it's a 3D shirt. Take those glasses off. And aren't you a little bit old to be reading comic books? Comic books? <laughs> Research. There's a lot of valuable material in these little books if you only know what to do with it. Well, I hope you finish doing it because I'm going to put my car in the garage tonight. You can have the garage tomorrow, Father. Freddie and I are through with our project. We're testing tomorrow. Michael, as your father, I have a right to know what you're doing. I only wished I could tell you. It's, it's just like a no-hitter. You don't talk about it before or you jinx it. If you were working on a no-hitter, I wouldn't mind, but I don't like this secret project stuff. Just have faith in me, huh? Why, if this works out, like Freddie and I hope it will, my name will be all over the country. And if it doesn't, I'll be all over the country. Michael, it isn't dangerous, is it? Yes, Mother, there... There is a certain element of danger attached to it. Yes, but... But you're now in the same position that Columbus's mother was before he sailed to those uncharted islands. Or Benjamin Franklin's mother before he sent the kite into the air and into the lightning. Galileo's mother. Liberace's mother before he sat down... Well, better if their fathers had been around, they wouldn't have been monkeying with such foolishness. All I ask of you, son, is to try to be careful. I shall. I shall, dear. Well, I'm tired. I'm, I'm going to retire now. So early. It's only a little after eight. I must get my rest. Tomorrow's zero hour is at 0500. Good night. Good night, Michael. Good night, dear. You have a wonderful son there, Officer Mulligan. <laughs> well, shall we watch the late movie, Mrs. Columbus? You wear that shirt, no matter what anybody says. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Moon, here we come. Ten, nine, eight. Hey, Miss, I wonder what kind of girls they got on the moon. Never mind about what kind of girls they got on the moon. Seven, six. You think maybe I should have asked Pat to go along? Hurry up. The ice cream's melting. Four, three, two, two. Oh, 
nó chịu quá the drawing board. Hey, Max. Yeah. Did you fix the afterburner yet? Yeah, all fixed. Freddie, throw me the big wrench up there, would you please? I need it. That afterburner was quite a problem. Ow! What's the matter? What's the matter? You hit me with the wrench. That's what's the matter. Oh, I'm sorry, Mick. Listen, what are you, a saboteur? Why don't you watch the way you throw the tools around? Hey, I think we got the bugs out of them. What do you think? Well, well, let's check with our research books. Uh-huh. Well, we got the proton vaporizers hooked up to the propulsion tubes, uh -huh. just like it says here in Fantastic Science for Everyone. Yeah, but take a look at the diagram here in Captain Sonic of the Galaxy Patrol. Mm -hmm. He has a straight turbo generator, if you'll notice there, in a series with his reactors. He claims it gives him more positive deceleration. Do we really want that? <laughs> hello? Am I welcome? Uh, hello, Professor Gordon. <laughs> Who's that? It's Professor Gordon. Used to be my chemistry teacher. He retired a couple of years ago. Mm. 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 Oh, uh, <laughs> Professor Gordon, Freddie and I, we don't want this to get around town at all. Mm. 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 Yeah. You, uh, you fellas built this, uh, Yourself? That's right, sir. It's uh, it's our rocket ship. Oh, Mickey, you were never a scientist when you were in my class, and I'm afraid you haven't improved any since. Oh, wait a minute, Professor. What do you know about rocket ships? Uh huh. Oh, that that was just a science fiction magazine, sir. It's been lying around here. Uh, so I see. I suppose you think we're crazy, Professor, getting our research out of a magazine like that. Crazy? Why, no, of course not. Why, science fiction is frequently written by reputable scientists. It's a matter of record that the works of Jules Verne, of H.G. Wells, have proved to be more fact than fiction. Well, tell me truthfully, Professor, how do you think this stacks up with all of that? Well, I, I'm not an authority on spaceships. However, since my retirement, I've been doing some research work on rocket fuels. Rocket fuels, you hear that? No. Yes, right now, I'm experimenting with liquid oxygen. Liquid oxygen? Mick! We sent away for some liquid oxygen, but all we got back was a letter from the FBI. Uh, uh, Professor, you couldn't maybe uh, sell us a couple of gallons, could you? Oh, well, I hadn't planned on selling any. However, as a courtesy to fellow scientists, I think I could let you have a couple of gallons. Professor. Yes. You drop in at my lab later on this afternoon, and I'll see what I can do. Thank you, sir. Thanks very much. You don't know how much we appreciate this. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye, Professor. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Next stop, the moon. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hello, Michael. Michael, what have you got there? Oh, this is something Freddie and I bought from Professor Gordon for our project. Oh, Michael, I thought you gave up that crazy project of yours. You know the old saying, if at first you don't succeed, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll succeed this time, Mother. After all, somebody has to go. Go? Go where? <laughs> There. I don't see anything. Just the moon. Now you know. Oh, Michael, be sensible. You can't go to the moon. Why, you don't have any shots or passport or anything like that. Mom, please don't stand in the way of my destiny. I won't let you go to the moon. There are plenty of nice places around here. Why don't you go to Yosemite? I've been to Yosemite. Mom, I want to conquer New Horizons. Oh, I don't want to discuss it any further. You're not going. Mom, I'm over 21 and I so want to... So am I, and I'm not going to the moon. Now go wash up for dinner. All right. Aren't you going to put those cans in the garage? Well, this is Professor Gordon's secret rocket fuel, liquid oxygen. I want to keep it in my room so nobody dare lay a hand on it. Is it explosive? Is it explosive? This is what propels the rocket. Outside, you might what? be going to the moon, but you're not taking this house with you. Out. <laughs> 
honest. I, I don't know how science makes any progress at all. Uh, I'm still asleep. Why do we have to leave so early? Use your head, Freddy. We have to get to the moon before it sets. Maybe we should have waited for a full moon. Would have been easier to hit. Look, have you got all the supplies aboard the ship? Yeah, I think so. Hope I didn't forget anything. Let's see, we got powdered milk, powdered eggs, marshmallows, peanut butter, and bicarbonate. Beads, how about the beads? We're trading with the natives. Check, check. Good. Hey, do you think we got enough fuel? Uh, well, Professor Gordon said that the two gallons of this rocket fuel would be ample, but just to be on the safe side, I put in a gallon of kerosene. Shall I get the spacesuits out? Yeah, yeah, get them out. We'll put them on as soon as we pre-flight the plane. Then we'll be off. Uh. Gee, ain't she a beauty? Sturdy as the rock of Gibraltar. Hey, wait a minute. We forgot something. What? We forgot the christener. Oh, of course. Here, break out the bottle. Thanks, Fred. Ready? I christen thee spaceship invincible. Get the glue. Michael. Oh, Michael. Are you flush already? Only five o'clock. Hello. Do no? Michael? I'm sorry he isn't here. I've just discovered I made a terrible blunder. I thought I gave Mickey and Freddy Fuel Z1. Instead, I found I gave them Fuel Z6. Z6? How nice. You don't realize. Z1 is perfectly harmless, but Z6? Why, that's liquid oxygen. If they put that fuel into their rocket, well, they'll fly to the moon without a ship. We must stop. Thank you, Professor. Well, Larry, you're all set. How does it feel? Huh? How does it feel? Oh, fine. A little warm, though. Maybe we should have got the air-conditioned ones for a buck and a half. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. You hold mine, and I'll work my head into it. Okay. Huh? I said okay. Yeah. It is a little warm, like you said, though. Let's board the ship. <laughs> That's it. Right on in, bud. from the Air Force? Afraid not, but you got a letter from your sister in Omaha. Her husband came back. Poor girl. Hey, uh, I should have heard from the Air Force. I wrote them a week and a half ago to report that flying saucer I seen. They ought to be down here investigating. Now, Henry, maybe you just imagined you saw a saucer. Your eyes could be playing tricks on you. Martha, my eyes are just as good as they was 20 years ago when I seen my first flying saucer. Now, Henry, I gotta get back and finish putting up the preserves. Martha, look in that mailbox again. There's gotta be something in there from the Air Force. Flying 
saucers. Marco! Marco! Freddy. Fred! Uh, we've made it. What? The moon. We, we've so made fast. it. fast? What? So fast? Fast. You remember we blacked out when we took off? Who knows how many years later it might be? <laughs> Why, this is... Oh, no, no, don't. Don't remove the helmet yet. Let me test the atmosphere. <laughs> Smells like air. I wonder where they get it. <laughs> I'm not turning green or anything, am I? I don't think so. It is air. Just like ours. I still don't understand how we got here so fast. We left planet Earth at 5.30. It's now 5.35. That's only five minutes. Ah, five minutes in our time, yes. But it might be a million light years in space time. Well, if, if this is the moon, what's that up there? That's the Earth. Hi, Mom. Home safe. Let's go. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen, this is progress. We've got to carry on. We can't back out now. This is important. Don't you realize, Freddy, that we're the first men to ever set foot on the moon? Get me the flag, please. I claim the moon for the United States of America. <laughs> Well, come on, let's not waste any time. Let's, let's look around. I got a date tonight. What's that? That's a moon man. It's like a cow to me. They'd like to have us think. Remember our interplanetary research? We're all members of the animal kingdom. Down on Earth, people are the dominant species. But here on the moon, all moon men look like cows. Evolution has changed its course. Ah, so that's the way the old ball bounces. Yeah? I think it bounces that way. Get the beads. Peace. Peace, moon man. Peace, moon man. We bear gifts. Take us to your president. Thank you. Maybe he doesn't like the trinkets. Your vice president? Hey, wait a minute, Mick. We made a mistake. Here come the moon people. Well, I'd blast one of our theories. They might be hostile. We better put our space helmets on. Yeah. Henry, you're right. I would have never believed it. <laughs> Almost human. Don't let them fool you. They are men from Mars if I ever saw one. Look, they're changing heads. <laughs> Henry, did you call the sheriff's office? Yeah. Darn fools. Said I should lay off a corn liquor. You really should, you know, Henry. These moon people look hostile to me. Look at the way he's holding that weapon. Get some more beads, Freddy. <laughs> I didn't think these moon people would look so human. He's only got two, two arms. They're supposed to have six. Don't let them fool you. It's only a trick. Those are suits they've got on. Inside of those suits are the real moon people. I'm going to see if I can kick them alive. Now, Henry, you wait and make sure if they're friend or foe. Let's go home. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen, Look, we gotta, we got to be brave. we got to stick this thing out. Let's try and make friends with them. I'll, I'll try and talk to them in their language. I think they're friendly. They brought along an American flag. Love them! He bought him good night, said no. Ha, ha, no, no. He no give it up, he do not. Henry, he's trying to speak to us. Answer him. 
Glam Mabel, Hub Mabel, Rob Rob, you did, you did great. What do you say? Moon talk. Eat no. Eat no need of need. Up the glove, wobble, 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 need me, wobble, wobble. Eat no need, no need. I never need no give no friends. He and I, friends. You speak English. Savages speak English. They're taking off their heads again. No tricks now. What I want to know is, where did you spacemen learn to speak English? Why, I learned English in the third grade. What part of the moon is this? Glendale. Glendale? You have a Glendale up here too? Something's wrong. You know, if I didn't know that we were on the moon, I'd swear I'd seen this fellow in Sam's Market. Henry, put down the pitchforks. They seem like right nice Mars folk. They are trained that way. They move among us, and we can't tell them from ourselves. Oh, little dick. Mars folk, would you like a bite to eat? Or, or don't you eat? Martians? We're not Martians. We're, we're from the Earth. Earth? I swear I've seen this fellow at Sam's Market. Don't you pick? Here come some more of them. It's, it's Mom and Pop and Professor Gordon. Oh, Michael, thank heaven you're all right. Mom, Papa, how did you get up here? We came in my car. The car? I, I, I don't understand. Michael, you're not on the moon. You're about two miles from where you took off. How many light years is that? I think Joe Mulligan's son would pull a stunt like this. I'm, I'm sorry, folks. I... I guess I really goofed this time. To think I claim Glendale for the United States. Don't feel bad, my dear. If there weren't any dreamers, there'd be no progress. Thanks, Professor. Come on, now. He's on. Now for the local news. Tonight, I have as my in-person guests personalities... I can't believe it. Michael on hours. television. First, I want you to meet a true champion. Champion Florinelle Rabbit of Northridge, winner of the San Fernando Valley Dog Show. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you for appearing in our telecast. Come on, Chad. <laughs> Which brings us to the two young men seated on my left. One Thank of the, you. <clears throat> one of the oldest dreams of mankind has been space travel. Well, these two young men not only dreamed about it, they actually attempted it. They tried to fly to the moon, a distance of 238,000 miles. I wish Michael would straighten his tie. Unfortunately, they 237,998 miles short of their goal. Now tell me, gentlemen, when, uh, when did you first realize that your flight to the moon was a failure? Uh... <clears throat> when when we landed, uh, I I looked around uh, for some uh, the uh, craters, uh, and uh, I didn't see any, uh, so that sent set me to wondering. <clears throat> and that cow that disillusioned me. I kept telling Mickey it was a cow, but he he, you he kept. You didn't, tell, you didn't tell me what it was. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we all gave it all the time. Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, I didn't give it. Uh, you did. Gentlemen, <laughs> the question I want to ask you is. Why do you think you fell short of your objective? Well, uh, I don't think that our rocket engines utilize the full power uh, of our fuel. Oh? Well, um, uh, what kind of fuel did you use? A special rocket fuel Z6, perfected by uh, Professor Gordon. It's a form of, look out, uh, liquid oxygen. It looks just like water. Yes, sir, it does, but there's enough power in there to blow us all to the moon. Is that a fact? Yes, oh, pardon me, sir, please watch the uh, cigarette. It's highly explosive. Hmm. 
You know, when the folks on the moon hear about that, they'll be coming down to visit us. Those were the words from the nice folks who will bring you our show next week. So until then, good night. And as they say on the moon, Ignig Aldignug. Thank you.